transferring the money without carrying the actual money, which gave rise to the reserve notes. Right? So when they started robbing Big Mama House, because they killed off all her boys. See, that they couldn't get to Big Mama House till they could start robbing all of her boys, start killing off all of her sons and her grandsons and her nephews. Because we ain't do that shit. Big Mama House always been off, it's always been a neutral zone. I'm beefed out with a motherfucker, but if I see him at Big Mama House, we both giving each other a pass. We not bringing that shit to Big Mama House because we got an answer to every clan under Big Mama's jurisdiction. Big Mama became known as the grand matriarch of the land when she had the most matriarchs on the land under her direct command, Mother Khadija, Nation of Islam. The culture hasn't changed. The perception of the culture has changed. Our understanding of our people's position in the culture is diminished. This tribal land, every square inch, <clears throat> every square inch of this shit is tribal land. They told me we got conquered. We might as well give it up. Give it up. Let it go. Fuck them. They won. Go along to get along. Tap dance with these niggas from here on out. Go along to get along. I don't know how to do that shit. I am not good at go along to get along. I'm not really good at getting along. I even fall out with the people that I love when they on some bullshit. But it don't mean that I got hard feelings. It just mean I got a low tolerance for bullshit. So I stay in the cave. But this shit is ridiculous. So now, all of the ones like me telling y'all what's up, let Dane Calloway know. I'm here to make him think. I'm here to make him think on a higher level than what he already thinking on. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do that because he's a bad motherfucker. But I'm going to try. I'm supposed to make him think. I'm supposed to make him go back and look some shit up because he'd agree it. I'm just a motherfucking medicine man. So if I can get Dane to get to know where the records at, he can claim the records by public notice. He ain't got to do no paperwork. We do everything out in the open by public notice and they do everything behind the doors in secret. That secret squirrel shit is what got us fucked up. Because we thinking that that nigga with the apron on and them white gloves going in the lodge is a member. And he running that bitch with all them pale motherfuckers in there who is reaping all of the rewards for keeping his cover. He, they reaping all the rewards for keeping this motherfucker covered. I guess that's what they mean by the blood of Jesus. I guess. Now look. We didn't come on no ships. We never identified each other by classification of skin color. Geographical location of origin. Or we never identify anybody from political views. We tribesmen. We tribe up. That's what the fuck we do. And the biggest tribes on the land is responsible for the most security on the land. Y'all calling them gangbangers, right? Anybody know them brothers in Detroit, the Detroit 300, that just declared war on the gangs? I need y'all to tell them, them motherfuckers this. Y'all starting exactly how every gang started. Until you get infiltrated. And look, you declaring war on tribes, nigga. We getting it off the dirt. Off the fat of the land. We always have, always will. Everything they threw at us to oppress us, we used it to come up. They thought the dope, they thought the crack was going to kill our community. We got rich off that shit with them. 
right? I'm going to save it. We got rich off that shit with them. They thought that we was going to stay drug addicts and shit. We started coming up off that shit. They put us in prison in mass. We turned that motherfucker into universities and monasteries. The ones of us that's about to write shit. Yeah, the pilgrims the ones came on ship. John Wayne kept telling you. You know? Yes, West Sash, Big Tukey. Look, Tukey was in cryostasis. They was not allowed to kill him but they was allowed to put a soul on ice. He was a brave motherfucker because you're not freezing me. We going to tear this bitch up because you're not freezing me. I hate being cold. And they froze this motherfucker for some years. Thought him out. Right now, he ain't all his mental faculties ain't back together because he lost some brain cells with that shit. So he be standing there kind of looking in the daze a little bit. But he is aware. He talking about fearless. Nigga, you not freezing me. Fuck the dumb shit. We going to shoot it out, fight it out, scrap it out, stab it out, baseball bat it out. But you not freezing me. I'm not doing that. One. But yeah, I guess when he faced with the opportunity of cryostasis or six feet, I probably would have took cryostasis, but that's some brave shit. I couldn't, I don't know about doing that one. I couldn't think I could do it. I ain't that brave. I'm, I ain't, I'm, I'm not scared of shit, but I'm not brave enough to let a motherfucker fear me, freeze me. Cause I don't trust the motherfucker to thaw me back out. So I, yeah, just like demolition man. So the codes is in the movies. It's in the books of the black nationalists, Solo Night, Solo Fire, Eldridge Cleaver. Eldridge Cleaver gave the gorilla knock off of Cleaver as a tomahawk. The tomahawk means straight up the middle, right? So when Eldridge Cleaver could drop Solo Night, one of the best black nationalist books ever written with his raping ass, and then he turned around on top of that and turned into a born again Christian and then had Soul on Fire, which was the worst black nationalist book I ever read. But they were the titles of the books was to tell a story on the West Coast knock. And the West Coast knock was answered in the motherfucking series of events in the music. Because Easy E got the left bump off a lethal injection from Ice Cube off of a Suge Knight pulling the covers off of a backdoor deal to execute Easy e by a lethal injection, but the lethal injection was that was preserved for, for uh, Tukey would be a, uh, a freeze, a Mr. Freeze off of a Schwarzenegger, a swarthy nigger. And a swarthy nigger is a light-skinned Tony Moore nigger, right? And a light-skinned Skin Tony Moore nigga that was born in Austria under the breeding program of Adolf Hitler. Right? And Adolf Hitler said World War III already started because soon as you niggas find out who the fuck I'm fighting, y'all gonna be fighting the same motherfuckers and then y'all gonna understand my plight. And my motherfucking outlaw name is Morpheus Hitler, the bitch nigga cleanser. Because I ain't got no problem addressing none of them bitch ass niggas that's in our way. This is why I tell y'all every day is another day to put another celebrity on blast. Don't stop putting them motherfuckers on blast until they start saying what we need them to say free Larry Hoover. That's it. Yeah, so that's why Schwarzenegger played Mr. Freeze in Batman. Now, the funny thing about Batman is Batman is Bruce Wayne in the mental in institution and all of the villains is his alter egos and his struggle to overcome the dark side of the self at Arkham Asylum. And Mr. Freeze was one of the characters in Arkham Asylum that was put in there in order to tell Batman that they froze somebody. And when you look at the symbols, it's off the cigar flip that 
Sue got on the red suit with the cigar in the same pose as Schwarzenegger and Mr. Freeze Blue with the cigar on the mirror flip to tell me that they froze Tukey, right? Off of an ice cube, lethal injection. Ice cube means froze, lethal injection, death row. Death row was because Tukey was on death row. Tukey got soldiers on both sides of the color spectrum. Because when he started the Crips, by default, he started the Bloods because the, the, the Bloods was the defense for the Crips to keep the Crips in check. Right? If you don't keep the Crips in check, they run the whole country by now. So the Bloods was created to keep the Crips in check. That's to keep them from overspilling the mount. What mount? The Rockies, motherfucker. And Rocky was with Bullwinkle. <laughs> And the Rocky Mountains is the divider between the Amaru and the Mississippians, right? That's why Tupac is Tupac Amaru. He the motherfucking chief from Alaska into South America on the west of the Rockies going down into Texas into Mexico. And the other side, the Mississippians, right? Morpheus Mysticus Megas is the chief from the Louisiana territories all the way going into Greenland and Iceland. The North Gate, the Cold Gate, Hell, the Bottom Gate, the Devil, the Wicked One with the Pitchfork, the Red Sun born to the Ice Princess. Come on, man. Y'all don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. This our shit. We got to get back on track with our shit. Malachi said for years, I got to get these stories straight in your head so y'all can see clearly what the fuck going on. Right? So, all of us similarly situated that understand the problem are under the same attack on this bullshit. You know, things yeah. work out and things, you know, happen and we're able to um, actually connect um, first, I think, in, a, in the spiritual realm and recognize, you know what? It's time. It's time. Um, you've been on the show. This is your third third time here on um, on the network, and of course, every time you're here, you know there's, you know, we got your you got your opponents and your proponents. You know, we got like I said, love, those that love you, those that hate you, those that understand you, those that are confused by the things that you say. Um, however, um, I recognize, and a lot of others recognize. Uh, your mission and purpose. And so tonight, what we want to do is do a, something a little different because folks are are used to you, you know, telling us what what Big Mama is saying, like right now, or what's happening on the on the land, the, what to look at, you know, what what has ended, what contracts are over. But you know, everyone has a beginning, and some folks think. You know, well, he just came out of nowhere or, you know, what gives him the right or authority. And he says, I too much. You know, we talked about that. So tonight, I want you um, to just whatever, you know, in the realm of, of spirit of truth and, and whatever you can release about Rod Hayes. Because sometimes the fact that we don't understand or, or, or understand or uh, understand where a person has come from to get them to the place what qualifies them to do and stand on the you know uh on the square or the soapbox or whatever the position one takes when until you walk the mile in someone else's shoes you really don't have a, a real understanding or understanding of what it took to get them to where they are so tonight let's delve into to you know we're talking about you know we talked a little bit about your struggles because you know and what you know even to the point of what your family thought so wherever you want to start so i can shut up because they know that's the start <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll interject when i have to okay so um one of the things you brought up is uh proponents and opponents the ones who understand the message and uh know what i'm doing and those who are confused by it and is in opposition you need both sides, right? And 
we're not operating from man's law right now. We operating from the position of what's called universal law, which is the highest law we can ascertain in the 3D world. Right. So mm -hmm. when we talk about contract law, we're talking about the laws of men. That which is codified and recorded in books um, being pushed by barristers in order to enforce the jurisdiction of um, the royal government on to the people. Mm -hmm. Right. At some point, we have to figure out how to get from under the oppressive yoke of the corporation. The corporation is a straw man. It's a legal fiction. So it has no compassion for the people, right? Now, early on, um, I knew something was wrong when I was little, when I as a as a child. But I didn't know how to tell uh, people what I seen. But I knew that I had um, some kind of psychic abilities uh, where I could foretell the future. Like it was very common as a as an adolescent that I would um, hear a voice give me a number in my head, and I'd go get a number to my mama when we be hungry on our knuckles, and she'd hit the number and go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Right, um, that talent or that skill was cut off by Big Mama from the adults exploiting the child. The innocence of the child has to be protected by the adults that's harvesting that skill. So they would make promises that I'm gonna do this if I hit the number, if you give me the number, and then I give them the number and they never follow through. And that's repugnant to the laws of nature and universal law. So the only way that Big Mama can stop the exploitation is she has to turn off that faculty. So now I couldn't give you a good number if I wanted to, right? Because the exploitation as a child for the number, which was enriching people, it was getting them out of um, poverty conditions, was exploited by the adults, writing the child off as being insignificant when the children are the future to our nations. So under the matriarchal structure, so you remember Ty saying that he knew when I was talking about raising the matriarchy, what I was, what I was on, mm -hmm. this is what he's talking about. Under the matriarchal structure, the men and patriarchy believe it means do the same thing as patriarchy with women in charge. That's not what it means. What it means is when we raise children, we raise the children to be different from the parent in a better way. All of the matriarchs, the mothers agree that if we raise children correctly, we have competent and functional adults. But when the society is intervening in the rearing of the child in order to exploit them for the workforce and for their militaries to fight their wars, the works of the mothers become a hundred times harder and it becomes ten times less effective. Right? So she's doing a hundred times the work for one tenth of the benefit that if the society would honor the position of the mother in rearing the child properly according to the law, universal law this we don't care about man's law man's law is irrelevant to us universal law big mama's rules is universal law and she speaks to all of us but all of us can't hear her right some of us been listening to it for so many past lives is second nature right and you can see the energy move from godmother to godmother as they give you instructions on your life path if you know what you're looking for i knew that at an early age what i was looking for but i couldn't understand why i was searching for it and every time i'd be looking for an answer my mama used to always say the same thing don't try to figure it out. Just keep asking the Lord for wisdom. If you get the wisdom, you can solve the problems. But if you don't pursue the wisdom, you will be submerged in the problem. The problem will overtake you. Right? So we follow the universal law, the path of least resistance. And the corporation follows man's law 
um, and the law of the jungle, I'm gonna make you do what I want you to do, and then I'm gonna contract you to it to hold you in my in my favor. That's slavery. And as long as we're not um, cognizant of what's, what does it mean to have to file uh, an application for a job, right? When you look at what an application really is, it's a it's negotiable instrument between the person that's willing to give their energy up to the person who knows how to benefit from the energy and the person who's giving their energy up is negotiating the rate of production of energy that they can give to the corporate jurisdiction that they are signing the um, application with. So it's, it's basically an exchange of um, economics or currency for labor expended, right? It's a basic math problem. Now, the laborer is unaware of the um, calculating instrument of the labor. So he don't really know his true worth. He don't know that the corporations uh, measure the jobs by um, physical exertion and calories burned per hour the same way as they would say